The send-off of NASA's Explorer tests was like the beginning of an astonishing excursion into space. It demonstrated that we can keep an eye on Earth as well as everything in our nearby planet group and beyond. Even after 46 years, these marvelous space apparatus are still providing scientists with new and shocking information about space. Although their memory is 3 million times smaller than that of our cell phones and their speed is 1,000 times slower than our fastest 5G web connection, these incredible tests still lead the way in exploring space. Now, Explorer 1 has simply made an incredible discovery in interstellar space, one that challenges all that we assumed we knew about the universe. It found something so rare that scientists are left scratching their heads. But what exactly did it find, and how does it redefine our understanding of the universe? On a special day, September 5, 1977, from a place called Cape Canaveral in Florida, something astonishing happened. Explorer 1 began its journey into space, sent off by a strong rocket called Titan II. Only 15 days later, on August 20, 1977, Explorer 2 joined in, beginning its adventure into the universe. Their main work was to examine the large gas planets in our planetary group like Jupiter and Saturn and the moons around them. But guess what? These space voyagers went far beyond. They went way out into our vast solar system, breaking lots of records on their incredibly lengthy trip. They've been going longer than any other space apparatus ever, and they've gone farther from Earth than anything humans have made before. They even went into a place called interstellar space, which is like going into a whole different part of our system that no one explored before. These space trailblazers, Explorer 1 and Explorer 2, are more than 12 billion miles away from us now. Still, they continue to amaze scientists with the astonishing things they're discovering out there. And they've recently found something so unexpected that no one saw it coming. The Explorer twin tests have done some awesome stuff. Over a long time back, they checked out the moons of Jupiter and Saturn and completely amazed scientists. People used to think these moons were boring and full of holes like our moon, but apparently not. They're buzzing with activity. Explorer 2 was the first of the twins to drop by Uranus in 1986, and just three years later, it zoomed past Neptune. But here's the interesting part. It's the only rocket that has ever done that. As these rockets move forward on their amazing journey, NASA is doing some tricks to ensure they keep working. They switched off certain things they didn't need, like extra parts and heaters, to save power. That way, these rockets would be able to continue pressing onward until at least 2030. For the scientists and engineers who've been part of this incredible adventure from the very beginning, it's a mix of happy and sad feelings. They worked hard, and now, when they thought the Explorer missions were nearly done, an amazing discovery emerged from space. The information sent back by Explorer 1 and its twin shuttle has become a mother load for scientists. They ignited lots of discoveries and got people excited about space. These are two shuttles that were built extra carefully, like stable platforms, so they could take clear pictures and gather data while zooming through space. Even before they reached the outer planets, their photos were already knocking scientists' socks off. Explorer 1 started sending pictures of Jupiter, even though it was still far away from the planet. People at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory got excited when they saw the first pictures of Jupiter's swirling clouds and the famous Great Red Spot. However, the pivotal moment came when the explorers found something astonishing on Jupiter's moon, Io. This moon, assuredly bigger than Earth's moon, turned out to be the most active volcano in our entire nearby planet group. Explorer 1's instruments picked up strange signals from Io, and the pictures they took showed massive volcanic eruptions and stuff flying out into space. One of Io's volcanoes, called Pele, erupted massively, higher than even Mount Everest, and covered an area nearly as big as France. The explorers combined took more than 33,000 pictures of Jupiter and its moons. They showed how stunning Jupiter is and all the different scenes on its moons. Another big surprise was finding out Jupiter has rings. Although they're not very bright, this discovery made Jupiter even more interesting. Also, Explorer 2 found that Europa, one of Jupiter's 53 moons, has a thick ice shell more than 60 miles thick. These revelations made scientists rethink what they thought about these distant objects in space and got them curious about whether icy moons like Europa could be places where life could exist. As the explorers left Jupiter, they got a boost from the planet's gravity that behaved like a strong kick, sending them towards Saturn. 
This kick was particularly significant because it helped them break free from the sun's pull and keep going into space. Explorer 1 and Explorer 2 went their ways after that, heading to new places. Explorer 1 got close to Saturn's moon Titan, which has a kind of orange haze around it. Scientists got curious about Titan's secrets, so they studied its complicated chemistry. Then Explorer 1 turned away from other planets and started going beyond our solar system. On the other hand, Explorer 2 had some amazing adventures too. In 1986, it flew by Uranus and found 10 new moons, adding to the total count. Three years later, it reached Neptune, showing us the amazing things about this faraway ice giant. Explorer 2 even measured winds on Neptune going as fast as 1,000 miles per hour, the fastest ever on a planet in our solar system. When the shuttle got close to Neptune, only 2,980 miles away, it gave us new and stunning insights about this distant world. Neptune's biggest moon, Triton, turned out to be one of the coldest places in our planetary group, with temperatures dropping to a freezing less than minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit. Triton also had these cool ice volcanoes that shot out nitrogen gas and icy stuff into its thin air. These revelations made us realize how unique and fascinating the planets and moons in our solar system can be, even the farthest ones. Imagine a space adventure story, and one person who had a big impact in pushing it along was the famous astronomer Carl Sagan. He was part of the team that took pictures for the Explorer mission, and he wanted to snap one last set of pictures before switching off the cameras. These photos would be like a special gift for everyone on Earth, a last look at our home from far out in space. Sagan didn't give up, and it paid off. On Valentine's Day in 1990, Explorer 1 turned its camera back towards the interplanetary group and took 60 pictures, the most famous one known as the pale blue dot. It was taken from 3.8 billion miles away, making it the farthest picture of our planet ever taken. In the photograph, Earth looks tiny, like a light blue dot in the vast space around it. Even after 40 years, these shuttles are still out there sending us valuable information from the farthest parts of space. Now let's talk about something a bit outdated. The Explorer tests use an old 8-track system. Yes, you heard it right, 8-track tapes were a big deal during the 70s, and these tests are still rocking them. It just shows how smart the people who planned this mission were, making sure these old tapes could still get the job done. But why 8-track tapes, you may wonder. Well, that's a story worth hearing. In the beginning of exploring space, the kind of digital storage we use today was just starting, so they needed something tough and reliable to store important data, and those 8-track tapes turned out to be the perfect choice. What's even more interesting is that the information on these tapes isn't just ordinary music. It's valuable science data about planets, moons, and space between the stars. Yes, these tapes hold the answers to some of the biggest mysteries known to man. Now, think about this. The Explorer shuttles face crazy things like extreme hot and cold temperatures, space radiation, and the void of space. But, of course, these old voyagers continue to areas of strength. It's like sending your grandparents on an adventure in Antarctica, and not only do they survive, but they thrive. The Explorer missions had this amazing move called Gravity Assist Moves. Think about it like this, Explorer 1 and Explorer 2, two tough space pioneers, were on a big mission to explore the far out in our planetary group. To move to these distant places and gather valuable information, they needed a little help, something other than just their engines. Here's where Gravity Assists come in, and it's kind of like a space dance. Instead of just using their engines, these rockets did this cool celestial dance with some of the planetary group's big planets. They used the strong pull of these giants to slingshot themselves forward, saving fuel and getting the speed they needed to visit lots of different places. Gravity assists, also known as gravitational slingshots, are all about grabbing some speed from a planet as the shuttle goes by. Imagine Explorer 1 swinging up to Jupiter, a massive gas giant with a pull to match its size. The research center ensured Explorer 1 world passed Jupiter at the perfect point and speed. Jupiter's gravity pulled at the space, making it go quicker, like a space power-up. But here's the interesting part. There's an art to this move. If Explorer 1 had approached Jupiter the wrong way, it might have been a space disaster, sending the space apparatus way off base. Fortunately, the NASA specialists aced it, and the invaluable celestial dance with the planets was a big success. The degree of precision required is awesome. But guess what? 
the smart researchers and designers who planned this grandiose dance didn't just get it right once, but many times. Thanks to these gravity assists, Explorer 1 and Explorer 2 went on this astonishing trip through the nearby planet group. Explorer 2, for example, used boosts from Jupiter and Saturn to zoom to Uranus and Neptune. These space moves played a huge role in getting the great visit going. Without these slingshot moves, the Explorer mission could not have possibly been as amazing as they were. Explorer 1 made it to interstellar space, and Explorer 2 wasn't far behind. Because of the immensely accurate gravity assists they got, the idea behind gravity assists is simple. However, getting it going is complicated. Explorer 2000 visit required a lot of precision. Assuming they missed any of those lifts, the whole mission might have gone wrong. However, the people managing everything were very skillful to get all the information they could. Efforts by researchers and space experts to fully understand the concept of gravity assist led them to uncovering something even more vile about the dark breadth of space. The Deep Space Network, DSN. Even though the Explorer missions use gravity assist moves to explore space, there's another important thing that made everything work. The Deep Space Network, DSN. Consider it like a space telephone line that kept us conversing with our brave Explorer tests as they went into the unknown. Now, what exactly is the Deep Space Network? It's not as flashy as a spaceship, but it's critical. The DSN is like a huge network of radio antennas in various locations of the planet, like California, Spain, and Australia. These giant dishes, some as big as 70 meters across, act like space amplifiers, assisting us with conversing with rockets that are somewhere far away from here. The Explorer tests, with all their cameras and sensors, were our eyes and ears in space. To understand the data they sent back and guide them, we needed a reliable communication system, and that's where the DSN came in. Imagine this, Explorer 1 making a beeline to the outer parts of our nearby planet group, broadcasts a message back to Earth. It's a weak signal moving extraordinarily fast through space. By the time it reaches Earth, it's really weak. But the DSN's huge radio antennas are ready to catch that weak signal. They lock onto Explorer's hum and turn it into data that scientists can use. The DSN doesn't just receive signals. It also sends orders. You see, missions like Explorer are continuously changing. Scientists and engineers need to change their plans or instruct the space apparatus they send. These orders go through the DSN, shooting them into space to reach Explorer. It's like a two-way talk between Earth and the farthest human-made things in space. Something marvelous about the DSN is that it works constantly 24-7, always listening for those faraway signals. The Deep Space Network is like our space operator, not just a bunch of antennas. It keeps the stories of the Explorer missions going, even as the space apparatus goes far beyond our solar system, exploring the unknown lands of interstellar space. Interstellar space is a bit simpler to reach than the far end of our planetary group. Imagine the solar system as an inflatable with a haze of comet-like things far away, kept intact by the sun's gravity. This cloud may stretch halfway to the nearest star, and it will take the Explorer tests about 300 additional years to get close to its edge. Now, when we talk about interstellar space, it starts where the solar breeze, a surge of charged particles and magnetic fields from the sun, ends. The solar breeze acts like a swelling balloon, forming something called the heliosphere. This is like a protective bubble around the nearby planet group, carried by the solar breeze. Eventually, this bubble gets compressed by pressure from interstellar matter, forming a boundary called the end shock. The line between our nearby planet group and interstellar space is known as the heliopause, estimated to be truly a distance away. Once upon a time, some theories put it as close as Jupiter. However, more accurate calculations in 1993 stated it's 100 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. Explorer 1 reached this boundary around 20 years after these estimations, detecting a rise in plasma density. Now, Explorer 2 reached the interstellar ocean in 2018, but it saw no changes in the magnetic field. This was surprising, as theories expected changes tied to the Sun's 11-year cycle. The solar wind was strongest when Explorer 2 arrived, testing these predictions. As the explorers provide real data, scientists are refining their models of how the heliosphere interacts with interstellar space. In simple terms, our sun left us a warm, ionized zone and entered a partially ionized section of the world, the hot zone. 